welcome to another fantastic episode of Lift Off. My name is Stephanie Newton, and I'm here with my pastor, pastor, speaker, author, and conference leader, Brother Jackie Cannell. Hey, Steph, what a blessing it is to be able to be back with everybody to do Lift Off. I really, I say it every month, I hope and pray that you're getting a nugget or two, and uh, as you listen to these, that, man, it just propels you to a different level of leadership. And so you're the, you're the brains. You come up with great questions, and uh, you help me and encourage me and kind of guide my thoughts because I'll be everywhere without without that. So it's good to be here today. It's great to be here today. I may come up with questions, but rest assured, this guy has all <laughs> No, the I don't either, I promise. <laughs> I'm still learning just like all these people are, trust me. Well, Pastor, today, let's talk. So many churches are good churches. They love Jesus, and they do a good job of reaching out to the community and connecting with visitors. Some churches, though, become great churches. Yes. Um, Pastor, as more than a 30-year veteran of ministry and having studied a lot of great churches yourself, what is the difference between a good church <laughs> and a great church? Boy, you really put me on the spot with this one because, <laughs> you know, I think a lot of that is defined by our own perception. Uh, you know, if you go to a lot of churches, they say, oh, we got a great church, oh, we got a good church. And so I think one of the things that we certainly need to uh, expose ourselves to is what I call facts and reality. And uh, I think that uh, certainly you can go from a good church to a great church, but you've got to be willing to investigate some facts and face some realities in order to challenge you uh, to move on into the level of a great church. Now, let me start off by answering the question this way. Uh, there is a book that's written by a business guru. His name is Jim Collins, and he wrote a book called Going From Good to Great. And so when you talk about that, um, my mind goes immediately to that book that was written a few years ago that talks about going from good to great. And I thought some of his insights into the, the thought of that was really uh, commendable. So if you want to get a book to talk about or to kind of help you along with that, I highly recommend Jim Collins' business book called Going From Good to Great. Now, let's put it in the context of what you said. What is the difference between a good church and a great church? Well, I want to say that if, when Jesus is building a church, it's always a great church. And so we don't ever want to forget that. And, you know, a lot of people would kind of uh, come to the conclusion of defining it based off how many people attend or yada, yada, you know, numbers and all that stuff. But I think the measurement of that is certainly making sure that Christ is leading you and guiding you and directing you as a church. But there are some practical uh, measurements that I, that I consider uh, based off 30 years of evaluating and looking and putting my finger on the pulse. And uh, so I'm going to give you a few of those. So get your pencil out and get ready to write down a few things. <clears throat> and Steph, I think that as we talk about this, I'm going to give you a few things to kind of marinate in. If you've got any questions, maybe you can move me into that uh, as we journey along. But I would say, first of all, that a good church has arrived and a great church is always arriving, meaning that a lot of good churches have reached their destination of arrival but great churches are always arriving. They're always moving past something. A good church has evaluated. A great church is always evaluating. A good church, uh, when you think about it, um, remembers what has been done. A great church is looking at what is going to be done. A good, a good church has, um, has, um, uh, has short-term leadership, I think, and it doesn't have a lot of longevity. A great church has longevity and leadership that allows it to propel itself to a different level. 
A good church remembers what has been done. A great church stays fresh and is thinking about what can be done. A great church helps other churches become great rather than just being internally focused upon them, their own selves. So I know there's a lot of pieces to all that, but when I thought about it, I think one of the, the most incredible defining thoughts is how, how much is it going to cost you to go from good to great? And I think that great churches are willing to pay a price to become great. You know, you can be good and be satisfied there and then say, well, you know what, we've kind of done our thing. We paid the price. Uh, you know, it's somebody else's time. A great church never says that. A great church is always saying, I'm willing to pay the price to become great. And uh, I wanted to give you just about four things that I believe it's going to cost you in order to go from good to great. Now, this is added benefit bonuses other than what I've already talked about. We'll elaborate on that a little bit. But if you don't get anything else, remember these four things that I believe a great church is willing to pay in order to become great. And what is the cost that it's going to require of you? First of all, there's going to be an energy cost to become a great church. You've got to be willing to give energy to something. And I guess just looking at that simply means you can't be satisfied and you can't be lazy. You've got to have energy and it's going to cost you some energy. I think that it's going to cost you some expansion. You got to be willing to enlarge yourself, to expand yourself if you're going to be a great church. It's going to cost you an economic price to be a great church. You're going to have uh, some economics in that that is going to cost you. You're, you're going to have an economic uh, demand on your enlarging ministry, and it's going to cost you an environmental cost, meaning, now let me go back and kind of talk about those four real quick. Energy cost, going from good to great, are you willing to pay the price of new energy? Expansion cost, are you willing to enlarge your footprint? Are you willing to expand your ministry? Economic cost, are you willing to pay the price for greatness. And then environmental cost, and what I mean by that is that if you're going to go from good to great, you can rest assured your environment's going to change. You can't keep everything like it once was. You're going to have an environmental change in, in that going from good to great. So when I look at it together, Steph, I just think that there is a significant difference going from good to great, and all of it is movement. It's all movement towards something. And churches that are great never stop moving towards something. Good churches arrive. They're there, and man, they kind of set their, uh, they kind of anchor their tent down. And they go, man, we're a good church. Well, to be a great church, you've got to pull the, the tent anchors up and enlarge and expand yourself. So for me, uh, I think those are some of the most important things. And uh, one more thing in regards to what I have saw over the years, going from good to great, great churches, listen to this, they know how to protect integrity. They know how to in protect their integrity. When you go from good to great, there is an integrity factor that you maintain. And that's what I've saw over the years. Hey, Pastor, the thing that I heard in your list was there's a constant motion of going forward. There's a collected energy and a collective attitude of 
you know, let's do this even better. Um, it's not that we figured out how to do it now. We're constantly adding to the betterness. Absolutely. Um, we, we see this good piece right here and, hey, let's do that. This would make this even better. And so it's a constant attitude of improvement and, and striving for more. Absolutely. You know, when you look at churches that have gone from good, and there's a lot of good churches, and it seems as if, and I don't want to minimize this thought, but it seems as if, you don't find a lot of great churches. You know, you, there there are a lot of there are a lot of good churches, but uh, you know, I believe that we can be great churches, and I think that you've got to be willing to have the fluid movement that takes you out of just oh, we're going to be a good church. What is it going to take to get you to be a great church? And I promise you, uh, when that happens, there's going to be forward motion in all that. And it's, to move forward, it's, uh, it's going to cost you some things. And some of the things that I mentioned, the uh, energy cost, the expansion cost, the economic cost, and the environmental cost are all things to take into consideration as you move from good to great, while at the same time protecting your integrity. Well, Pastor, as churches are kind of looking at that, or leadership of churches are kind of looking at that list and and kind of thinking, what are the elements of a truly great church? Now, just like you said, every church is a good church, and and certainly every church is striving to advance the kingdom for the, for Christ and to reach people. Um, so every church is a good church. But what are the elements of a truly great church? Well, you know, for us here, uh, we're certainly fluid. <laughs> we're certainly moving. And you ask any leader around here and they'll tell you, man, it does cost you uh, to be a great church. And what he just said is very true. So I think you could interview any leader around here and you would say, oh, there, there are some of those. Uh, what he just said in that first question is very true. But the elements, I believe that in order to have a church go from good to great, the very first element that you have, everything rises and falls on leadership. And leadership has got to be the pivotal point of, of uh, communicating, coaching, and leading that movement that takes you from good to great. So you, you can't go alone. You've got you've to go with a team. And that team has got to move with you. So I think that in doing that, uh, we've got to have a team of people that is embracing uh, this, this motion that, and, and is excited about it. You know, they're, they're excited about it, which I'll talk about in just a second. But in moving toward that, some of the elements, and this is where I see a lot of uh, churches staff that just kind of cut their legs out from under them. So I'm going to say something to you that maybe, maybe you don't think a lot about in the elements of going from good to great. First of all, you've got to maintain what we call maintenance ministries, uh, meaning that you can't reach over to the level of greatness while compromising the stability of goodness. Uh, your goodness is going to build you a platform to go to greatness. And so you've got to maintain your mini maintenance ministries. Now, when I say maintenance ministries, don't abandon what got you there. Uh, you know, you evaluate it, but you don't abandon it, meaning that you've got to do Sunday morning church well. If you do Sunday night, you've got to do Sunday night well. You've got to do... Uh, weeds night well. And I see a lot of churches that want to go to the level of greatness, but they compromise the foundation of what caused them to be good to start with. So you want to maintain uh, your maintenance ministries. That's vital. The other vital part that a lot of people don't think about is not only maintaining your maintenance ministries. When I say that, I'm talking about things you just do. That's just systematic. You, you do them, and you do them well without compromising that. But the other thing that, that I think you need to lock into is not only do you maintain your maintenance ministries, 
but you maintain your campus facilities. Um, you know, if, if you've got a, if you're wanting to go from this to this, and you got your eye on your dream, and you're, you're putting all your eggs in that basket of building a new worship center or a new education center or whatever it may be, don't, don't f neglect the buildings on your campus where they look poor or they're not maintain a level of cleanliness or, you know, you need to remodel something or you need to paint something. You know, in our church, guys, we're always doing that. We don't, we don't let things just go to the wayside. If it's going to be a building on our campus, it needs to be nice. It needs to reflect uh, we care. And so I think the elements is maintaining your maintenance ministries in your programming, maintain your facilities, and then give yourself permission to enlarge your footprint. If you're going to go from good to great, obviously, you're going to have to enlarge your footprint. It goes to the Acts 1-8 model. You witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost parts of the earth. It's the prayer of Jabez, enlarge my territory. Uh, enlarge your footprint. Now, that, uh, and I think so many churches don't know what that means, uh, enlarging your footprint. You know, a lot of people think, well, enlarge my footprint. I got to go to... Uh, you know, I got to go to a third world country or I, no, enlarge your footprint in your community, enlarge your footprint in your city, enlarge your footprint in your region, be intentional in enlarging your footprint and, and you will make progress in that. And then pay attention to details. Every little thing matters. And if you're going to go from good to great, one of the elements that we preach over and over and over again is pay attention to details around you. Uh, and, and I think that's important. And then communicate well. You've got to be able to communicate the vision and share that. And finally, in relation to this question, build great teams. You've got to build those great teams. And that's, that's an investment you make. So some of the elements, Steph, are just basic elementary things that so many of us forget when we go from good, when we're trying to go from good to great, we get our eye on the big picture while we sabotage what's going on that caused us to be good to start with. You'll never go to the level of greatness if you compromise your goodness. I think, Pastor, the, the needle in the haystack there is facilities. Absolutely. I think a lot of times when we think about greatness, we're thinking, let's do a brand new sound system or let's do amazing graphics. And then they forget just to take that walk through their classroom. Absolutely. Um, a cluttered classroom, a dirty space sends a huge oh, yeah, message to a visitor. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that we do here at Eden Westside is that our pastor, as busy as he is with as much going on, takes a walk around this campus and the other campus from time to time. And we as department heads do the same thing. Walk through with the, the viewpoint of a mm. visitor as a guest. What do you see? What's dirty? What's broken? What's out of place? What needs a fresh coat of paint? Mm -hmm. um, so many of those things are, are the little things that make such a big difference. Absolutely. You know, and, and walking through with a pad, a pen, making notes so that you don't forget them, uh, and then ask the question, when are we going to fix, repair this? When is this going to be replaced? By the way, what about this? And I think that uh, when you look at elements that make a truly great church, you know, a lot of times we think about some new program, some new magic, some new something, and we're looking for the, the magic one or the genie in the bottle to rub to go, what can make us great? Well, the elements that make you great 
is building off what got you where you are and making it better. But again, I say the elements can be a variety of different things, but these are just, you know, four, five, six of them that I kind of hammer on and go, okay, we got to make sure we do our programming well. We got to make sure our facilities look good. We got to pay attention to the details. We've got to, uh, we've got to communicate. We got to enlarge our footprint. Uh, we, we have to build great teams. And in doing that, uh, man, you're just going to, you're just going to continue to progress forward. Well, Pastor, in closing, let's take a minute and let's talk to the servant team of Eden West Side. What are some signs of great churches that you're looking for this servant team to employ, to do better, um, to reflect on? Well, you know, obviously our team is going to be listening to this. And uh, here's your time to, to go, oh, Brother Jackie said this, and, and, and that's true. I think that, first of all, that our team needs to go back and rewind this and listen to the first question and the answers and the second question and the answers and kind of marinate in that a little bit because even us as a great team, we probably need to be reminded of the first two questions and answers uh, to help us continue to strive to be a great church. Again, striving to be a great church. Um, I think some of the things that, that I would say to our team is, number one, avoid stagnation. You know, you cannot just ride my enthusiasm. You can't, you've got to avoid your own personal stagnation. And I would say that to our team members. Stay fresh. Avoid your, your stagnation. Stay balanced. I think that we have to f figure out what is that balance with us so that we don't get um, out of balance one way or the other. So avoid stagnation. Uh, stay balanced. Maintain excellence in what we do. Uh, we have the saying around our church, excellence honors God and inspires people. And I want us to maintain our level of excellence. Again, that goes back, Steph, to uh, looking at, uh, you know, evaluating the good things that got us where we are and maintaining that level of excellence with us. The other thing I would say is build a team ministry, not with just the people under you on your team, but the peers around you on your team. Build that team mindset that, uh, you know what, uh, you've, got a, you've got a ministry to do, but so does this one and so does this one. And we all have to lock arms together to accomplish the level of greatness that God has granted to us. And you need to build that team effort together. I think the other thing is sharing vision consistently. Think, talk about that, dream about that, share that, uh, sharing vision uh, that you hear from Pastor Down and just incorporating that in everything you do, uh, sharing vision about it with your peer group. I believe that you need to share vision up the ladder, down the ladder, and all around the ladder. Uh, I think that needs to be talked about often. And then stay in unispeak and unistep with your pastor. Walk with him and speak the same thing he's speaking. Uh, don't walk by, don't get lagged behind, don't get way out in front. Just stay in unistep and speak the things he's speaking. Uh, what that will do is that's going to build credibility with you, with people around you. It's going to eliminate confusion. It's going to create a unified vision. And I believe that as you do those things, uh, that you will be part of a great church. And uh, I've seen so many churches, Steph, that, that were on their right way to greatness, and a team member get crossed up with either A, the vision, or B, with another team member. 
and it just creates negative things and it, it, it just hijacks where, where you can be. And we need to realize that, that we, need to, uh, we need to work hard at, at maintaining that pursuit of greatness. You know, the Bible does say greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. And when we were talking about this session, I really wanted to make sure that my mind was set on, is it acceptable to God to say, we want to move into the, the arena of greatness as a church? And I, I just toyed with that in my spirit because a lot of times, if you're not careful, you can take away from this, oh, they're just trying to be all that. Well, no, God speaks about greatness. The Word of God speaks about greatness, not so that we can parade our achievements before the world, but so that we can display the greatness of our God. We can be, as I've been speaking on, His hands and feet to present to a world today that God's church is a great church. And if there's ever been a time that the world needs to see that, it's the day that we live in. We talk about great companies. We talk about great leaders. We talk about great schools. We talk about great universities. We talk about great accomplishments. I just think that it would be pleasing to God if people could say, those are great churches. So I'm happy to talk about great churches today. But it takes good churches to become great churches, and you will continually be great churches if you don't sabotage what got you to be a good church to start with. I think the motto of a church that is moving towards greatness, and I heard it this morning in our own servancy meeting, is we get to do this together. We get to do this together. What a great motto that is. We say it a lot around here, don't we? We do. We do. <laughs> Every week we say it. Yeah, we get to do it together, and uh, what a fun journey that is to be able to do that. So thanks for letting me come and hang out with you today. I hope a little nugget fell here and a little nugget fell there, and we can all wrap our minds around that. But, uh, yeah, strive for greatness. You won't, you, won't, you won't be sorry that you did that. Well, there you have it. Thank you for joining us for Liftoff. We would love for you to connect with us at jcimpact.org for more resources or for a JC Impact event coming near you. Um, again, you can reach us there. Thanks for watching and thanks for sharing Liftoff and other resources for JC Impact on your social media platform. Have a great day. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Look forward to hearing from you.